She didn't want me to have to make that sacrifice. And I just wanted to, and I actually did for a little bit, pound my head against the wall because I did not want to have to make this decision. I wanted you to just be okay with it. It was a close decision, but I ultimately made the decision to not go to the Final Four, to not join the band. So I texted the band director and told him that I wouldn't be going and explained why. And, and he, he knew about Samantha's cancer at this point, so he right. said it was totally reasonable. And I'm glad someone else got to go in my place. I'm sure they had a great time. Yeah. I'm sure they enjoyed it. But that is not the end of the story. Because then I decided um, that I want it all. I want both things. <laughs> and so we decided... Yeah. Well, your ke your chemotherapy was going to be what day? April 5th, Friday. Friday, April 5th. And... The first game of the... First game of the Final Four was going to be on April 6th. Saturday, yeah. Saturday. So, we didn't have to miss the Final Four. I couldn't go with the band, but we could still go to the game. So there were a lot of things suddenly... I had that idea, and you said, yeah, maybe we could do that. So we had to start thinking about a lot of things. First... Could you even do that? Could you get on a plane after chemotherapy? Would you be able to feel okay? Are your doctors even going to say that's allowed mm -hmm. for you to get on a plane after chemotherapy, go to Minneapolis for a few days, and then come back? The second really big question is, could we get tickets to the game? Because it's the Final Four. It's a huge game. The tickets sell out. Mm -hmm. My dad has season t tickets to Virginia basketball, and season ticket holders got a chance to enter a lottery for tickets. And you could request how many tickets you wanted up to four. So my dad decided, I'll go ahead and just request four tickets and see if I get the opportunity to buy. And his dad his did this before he, he had already we, done this. Even, we even had this talk. That's right. Yeah. His and, dad just did that just to see if he could right. get four tickets. And he was sure he wouldn't be able to get tickets because he's on the lowest level of donor status or, or whatever. His seats in John Paul Jones Arena are way up in the rafters. They're not any good because he's got this really low status. Then we said, okay, let's start looking at StubHub and all these other apps. And they had them, they were expensive. We would have had to spend- Like a thousand dollars. A lot of money, several hundred bucks a person for seats that were nowhere near. And yeah. for a little bit of comparison, the, the game was in the- Football The stadium. Minnesota Vikings football stadium. So we would have gotten right. seats way up there and I don't even know, they would have looked like ants like playing basketball right. from down there. And so, and then the other things we had to determine were where were we going to stay and how are we going to get there. And so we start looking at flights, we look at hotels, one of the, the things that came up, and probably won't put this in, is that my uncle lives in Minneapolis and so we thought about staying with him but decided that I didn't want to be throwing up right. in somebody else's house. Exactly. You didn't want to be dealing with your <laughs> chemotherapy effects, which you had no idea what they were going to be because right. you never had chemo. Never had chemo before, did not know what my side yeah. effects were going to be. And you didn't want to be going through that at my uncle's house. My uncle who, at that point, you had never met, right? Yes. Had. That was the first time I met him. So, and then your dad, who loves you and is really good at booking travel, kind of like my dad. Yeah. He starts looking at flights. Yes. And he figured out flights. And that, that night, yeah. He figured out where, how we were going to get up there and how we were going to get back that night. My mom is thinking, are you, like, serious? Can you actually do this? What's the doctor going to say? And I'm just like, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. At some point over the next two days, we contacted your oncologist. Oncologist, yes. And he said, yes. Yeah. You can do it. Sounds like a great idea. He was like, that sounds awesome. That's... Yeah, so he was totally for it. And then there were going to be a few other things that we had to manage, like I was going to have to bring my medicine with me, and after chemo, I was going to have a new Lasta patch on my arm Right. Uh, that was supposed to be there for 24 hours, so when we were going through airport security, I was going to be having this big patch on my arm that was going to be blinking different colors, and so I needed to get... Right, and you couldn't go through like the body scanner. Or I had to get a special letter saying right. not go and through the body scanner. You have to deal with all your medications. We had to bring you, you know, anything in case you're feeling nauseous, a bag to throw up in, that kind of thing. We had to make those preparations because we didn't know how you were going to feel. Mm -hmm. And then we learned that my dad did end up getting his tickets. He somehow managed to get four tickets to the Final Four. Yes. 
And so we decided, and they great. They were pretty good seats, They were. Too. They were in the Virginia he, donor section, which was yeah. off of one of the in zones because it's a football stadium. Right. But it was way closer than we would have gotten, and it was way cheaper than we would have paid. Exactly. Both those things. Right. And so it was perfect because not only could Samantha and I go, but my dad could go, and my uncle could attend some of the games, too. We got a hotel, too, on right. the outskirts of Minneapolis. I had chemo on Friday. We went out to dinner after chemo because I felt totally normal and totally fine. I was like, oh, this is gonna be great. We went out to dinner and then after dinner that night, I felt so sick, so nauseous. I never threw up, but I felt super nauseous. I took the nausea medicines. They didn't help very much and I got very scared. I was like, how am I going to fly on a plane tomorrow while I have all these side effects. And I woke up at 6 a.m. Mm -hmm. the next morning. I was feeling better and I had a bunch of medicines because I was on AC chemo. That was it's really, really intense chemo. Um, so there's like all of these steroids and different medications you have to take for a certain number of days after AC. And yeah, so I got on a plane and yeah. We went and we had barf bags and I didn't end up having to use them. All of the flights into Minneapolis had been booked solid for months, of course, because everyone knew when the Final Four was going to be. So we flew into Eau Claire, Wisconsin. Tiny little airport. It's right. great. They, Love it. They have two flights a day and they're both to Chicago. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we fly they have in. one gate. We fly in th from Chicago to Eau Claire. Yeah, from where we are to Chicago to, to Eau, Claire. Eau Claire. Yeah. And rented a car, which uh, was a little tricky because we're not 25 years old, but we yeah. did it. We drove a couple hours from Eau Claire to Minneapolis, got to the hotel, and the next day we went to the game. It was UVA against Auburn, followed by Texas Tech against whoever, doesn't matter, Michigan State. So <laughs> we went to the game, we watched it. It was, of course, a nail-biter game. It was an amazing game, amazing to watch. I was on so much medication that I thought I was going to have a heart attack in the stadium. Your new Lasta injected you in the middle in of the, the game. In the middle of the game, my new Lasta went off and injected some medicine into it, my arm. It was a good time. We got to watch our band friends walk from their little tunnel right in front of where our seats were. We won that first game. We did win, and yes. So we were going on to the championship game in two days on April 8th. And you were feeling bad enough that we decided to go back to the hotel instead of staying for the second Final Four game. We watched a little bit of it, but we ended up leaving mm -hmm. in the middle. So we walked around to where our friends in the band were sitting, said hi. You did. Yeah, I, I walked around to yeah. where our friends were sitting, said hi, and told them that we had to go, but that we'd see them again in a couple of days. Yep. So the next day, we got to sleep in late and then go to some of the fan activities that they have. Mm -hmm. Your Capital One card got you into the Fan Fest. Yep. Good times. Which was pretty cool. Uh, we didn't stay for long because it's mostly geared toward kids. You didn't let me participate in the Buffalo Wing Eating Contest. Uh, it, they were... It was over. <sighs> you were too late. It was too late. <laughs> it wasn't a quantity. It was a spicy. Oh. Yeah. I was interviewed by a North Dakota <laughs> news station at the Fan Fest. <laughs> you were. That's yeah. true. If you guys have had chemo, which, you know, I don't know how the percentage of people who are watching this that have had chemo, but probably a good number of you, you know how bad the fatigue is. And let me tell you how bad it is. I felt like I didn't exist. I felt like I was looking down on myself walking around on the earth and that I wasn't actually alive. Like, everything was hazy. I was having trouble walking. I needed to hold on to you to make sure I didn't fall over. I just wanted to sleep all day long. It was the worst fatigue ever um, that I'd ever experienced because it's not the same thing as tiredness. It's not like, oh, you pulled an all night or two nights in a row and you, now you need to go do things. It's Oh man, I don't even know. That, that's, that's how I describe it, that I didn't feel like I existed. At this point, I was really feeling that. And so we were trying to do all this cool stuff. We were going out to dinners with his family, mm -hmm. and I was trying my best to feel like I was there, but it was very difficult. 
And it was so much fun though. I, I had the time of my life. There was, they shut down the whole downtown and they had food stands and radio shows and a big stage where the band was performing. So we went and saw that, yeah, that was again. Fun. We went to the national championship game. It was another extremely close game. <laughs> it had to be extremely close Just every like time. every game that season, except maybe Oregon. And <laughs> we won by a little bit. Yep. UVA was national champions. Confetti again. Confetti sprayed up in the air. <laughs> it was incredible, incredible experience. And you should put in some, some pictures from that. I assume you will. It was awesome. Uh, and I got a little bit sad when I saw that they, all of our friends in the band, who by the way were sitting right next to the court, they all got free national champion hats, hats the same ones that the basketball team got. Yeah. Uh, Which you can purchase. You can purchase, and I never <laughs> ended up buying one, because it, it doesn't mean the same. But yeah. that was my old, that was the only point in the whole thing where I regretted it a little bit, but it, it came, it went as soon as it came, and I'm so glad that we got to. Because we got to be got there to together. That. We got to watch. do 80% of the stuff I wanted to do and be with you 100% of the time. We had to be at the airport at 4 a.m. Our flight was at like 6. We had to be at the airport at like 4.30 or something to return the rental car. And... The airport in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. <laughs> right. So to be able to get there, we needed to leave at 2 in the morning. We went back to his uncle's house and we slept for like an hour. Right. If even. Yeah. And we got in the car and we drove to the airport and... Uh, we had to wait there along with everybody else on our flight because they only had one flight going out at that time. And basically everyone on our flight was doing the exact same thing. Um, they all had driven from Minneapolis to Eau Claire to get on the plane to go back to Charlottesville because they were all there for the tournament. So we all were on this plane completely sleep deprived and we all got to Chicago because that was where the connecting flight was and everyone was just passed out in Chicago. It was the whole flight was going to Charlottesville too. It was yeah. the exact same people. Everyone was going back to Virginia. Right, and so we like took off, we took, we switched off sleeping slash watching our bags. And at one point when he was sleeping, um, cause everyone was wearing their Virginia gear, right? Everyone was like wearing t-shirts and hats and everything. This old couple came up to me and they were like, oh my gosh, we, weren't able to watch the game last night, but we saw how awesome it was. And she's like, do you think it's okay if we take a picture of everybody here sleeping in their Virginia <laughs> outfits? And I was like, yeah, I think it's fine. She's like, it's just so funny. Like all of you guys were at the game and we were like, yeah, we were all on the same flight coming back. <laughs> the day before, by the way, uh, April 7th, as an addendum, between all of the different activities we were doing, the fan stuff, Somehow, you managed to walk two miles around a lake next yes. to my uncle's house. Yeah, I was like, let's go do that. That sounds fun. And I remember regretting it in the middle of the walk around the lake. Yeah. Um, I can't believe that I started. We were halfway around it, so we had to keep going around. Yeah. And I was like, I can't do this. But I did. And whoever says um, exercise makes you more awake when you're on chemo is dumb because when you have that much fatigue, it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, but it was fun. It was a good time. I had a lot of fun. And um, so we slept for 30 minutes in my cousin's room. Right. And then. Yeah, and we slept on the planes on the way back home. We got back home and slept. And then I tried to go to work on Wednesday and ended up not being able to work at all because I quickly learned after that that I needed an entire week to recover from AC chemo, that I was going to be tired for an entire week and that working was worthless because I couldn't focus on anything without wanting to go to sleep. And I was so tired that I somehow got myself to work in the morning. I drove an hour, but I was not going to be able to drive myself back home. So my mom and my sister had to come and pick me up and drive my car back to my house. And then the next day on that Thursday, I learned that I had a fever over 100.4, which means whenever you have that and you're on chemo, you need to call and you need to go in because it can be really bad. I took some antibiotics and it fixed it eventually, but probably from, you know, traveling right after your 
white blood cells get very... dropped drastically from your first chemo. Which but... is why we're not traveling right now. Yes, which is why we're being extra careful now. We know that Social distancing. I should have worn a mask in the airport, but I didn't because I was worried You probably about the still attention. wouldn't if we did the same thing today. Well, now I'm more used to the attention you were because- You are very anti-mask. I was very anti-mask. Well, you hadn't lost your hair yet. I, that's what I was gonna say, is that I'm way more used to the attention now because I went through the entire period where I didn't have hair and people looked at me and people came up to me and all that. So um, now it's not as bad, but then I wanted as little attention on me as possible. I still want that, but it's not as bad. So yeah, overall, great trip. Yeah, so that's the story of how your chemo started, how that IVF and chemo coincided with the NCAA and ACC basketball tournaments. So lots of big events clashing together. If things had gone a week earlier or been a delayed week a week, things might have been very different, but that's how it happened. It was an interesting story, one that I think brought us closer together. A story of sacrifice and... But interestingly enough, is the only way that I could imagine that we both ended up at the NCAA game and got to watch the national championship together. So I'm glad that it happened that way. Yeah, so that is that story for anyone who is wondering. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and be sure to check out my channel and subscribe to support me on my cancer adventures. Also, you can follow me on Instagram. And also, if you like my channel and you know someone going through cancer and you think my videos will help someone, feel free to share it with them. And yeah, cool. that's all. Bye!